Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Lofton. I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Codility, and we have a fantastic webinar focused on reshaping the future of campus recruitment. Before we begin, we just have a few housekeeping items. First, I want to say thank you to Workable, who's really helped us in organizing this webinar. And I also want to uh, say thank you to our panelists that are with us today and also our audience. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, we really like to keep the conversation free flowing. So if you have any questions during the panel discussion, please enter them in the chat queue that you see below. We'll try to answer as many as we can throughout the duration of the discussion. And before we begin, we just have a few slides that we'd like to uh, present to the audience and go over the agenda, as well as some in key insights that we'll be uh, sharing with you guys today. And I don't see the I don't see the um, uh, the deck. Okay, there we go. Fantastic. Great. Um, actually, we'll, uh, if we go a couple slides back, we'll just go to introductions or actually agenda, please. Fantastic. Great. So we'll go ahead in today's agenda today. So we'll start with the introductions with our panelists here, and then we'll uh, go into some really interesting insights and surprising stat, uh, stats on campus recruitment. And then from there, we'll really get into the heart of uh, what we want to do today. And that's really our interactive discussion. Again, we've got some great panelists here that I know they're gonna share some really intriguing insights and their approaches around uh, the future of hiring with campus recruitment. So really excited about that. So we'll go ahead and move on. Fantastic, and so we'll, we'll go ahead and kick off introductions. Again, myself, I'm Director of Customer Success here at Codility. Uh, really excited to be here today. Uh, Codility uh, has uh, nearly 1,500 customers globally. And we really help uh, technical recruiters and hiring managers um, with, uh, you know, really accelerating their, their hiring process. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Lori. Thanks, Scott. I'm Lori Bush. I'm the Director of Talent Acquisition Operations at Toast. So Toast is a Boston-based restaurant technology company. So really helping restaurants navigate this this new world, um, creating an, an, a technology that, that's helping them uh, survive and thrive in this new environment. So part of what recruiting operations is responsible for at Toast is the campus recruiting team. So we have a, a team of a couple of campus recruiters, mostly focusing our campus recruiting efforts in the sales and uh, technology space. Fantastic, thanks for being with us, Lori. We'll move over to uh, Cornelia. Uh, Thanks, Scott. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Cornelia, and I'm an employer branding manager at Flixbus. And uh, don't be fooled by the name. Flixbus is um, a mobility company, but it's not a bus company. Uh, it's a relatively young company that started in 2013. And our main idea is to kind of reform and renew the mobility uh, worldwide by, first of all, with the buses taking the whole purchase and the digital platform. And then in 20, 2018, we also launched with trains and uh, we are having uh, different projects uh, all over the board. Um, I'm responsible for the employer branding and uh, we have a very high uh, technical demand for talent uh, as well as the business side. So I'm going to um, tell you a little bit more about probably the branding side of things. Wonderful. Look forward to hearing that. Thank you so much. for Thanks. Being here. And then finally, Fizza. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Fizza. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. Uh, I'm an XIBMer and a technical recruiter. Um, I've done a lot of early professional hiring, some campus hiring as well, and uh, technical recruitment is my specialty. I'm very happy to be here. I'm actually starting my master's in September, so taking a little bit of break from work in the middle too, but looking forward to all the questions and all the insights with our uh, panelists today. Fantastic, and again, thank you guys so much. Really excited to, to drive this discussion. So if we could just move to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about some really interesting insights and concepts uh, around uh, uh, campus recruitment. And so, um, you know, not surprisingly, a lot of college students are really missing out on, on those traditional internships this year due to the due to the global pandemic, right? And what we found is the research has really bared out that about 22% of employers said they were canceling internships entirely, with another 19% really kind of undecided um, uh, going back to May 1st. 
Employee responses showed that most of the organizations who moved forward with programs modified them by making them virtual, shortening them, or, or both. And then some companies actually had to postpone or temporarily close their graduate program altogether. And now are, some are, are figuring out how to reposition in them and then also reopen them. And so with that, you know, going back to 2019, which frankly feels, gosh, almost feels like 10 years ago, looking at some of these key data points and, and, and starting with point one, you know, nearly 60% of all entry level hires being recent college graduates, campus recruiting has been at the core of finding the future of top, top talent to a majority of organizations. And now with global economic uncertainty, I was reading this morning that um, you know, gross domestic product in the United States actually shrunk by 34%. And so we're really in um, kind of the midst of this uncertainty glo you know, globally um, and then also domestically as well. And that's really kind of reshaping uh, the future of, of, of hiring altogether and in particular having an effect uh, that's trickling down to, to campus recruitment and, and graduates themselves. And so with this, coupled with, you know, this new virtual reality, organization, organizations and companies will be faced with both challenges and then also some opportunities for competing for these candidates. You know, the organizations that we find can really reshape, refocus, and then restructure their on-site to an online approach will actually be leaps and bounds ahead of the pack. And then kind of moving into point two, you know, point one is really critical because it really maps into point two. You know, these graduates, once recruited, you know, they're extraordinarily loyal and they want to roll up their sleeves and learn the necessary skills to make a strong impact. And then they also want to, they also want to stay with those organizations up front, you know, move and grow with them and, and really, um, you know, be with that organization that, that really believed in them. And so this is also challenging, you know, has some challenges itself from an organization. You know, they really want to uh, you know, hire the, the, the future, right? And so being able to, to position themselves and, and, and figuring out how to find these, these types of candidates is, is, is really taking some challenges on itself. And then finally, you know, point three, which I actually think is, is really most crucial here, you know, where that word of mouth and that human interaction was once paramount to really kind of spreading the word on who was hiring, that's just not gonna be the same anymore. Yeah, there's gonna be, you know, connection digitally that still happens, um, you know, on, in, but on the whole, this is going to have an, a, a huge impact and organizations are going to have to think outside the box to attract these types of graduates with new and inventive ways. And so with that, I'd love to go ahead and, and get into uh, the discussion mode here and start out uh, with a couple topics and questions for our panel. And uh, so uh, thank you so much for sharing the, uh, the slides there. We'll go ahead and get into the discussion. So I want to start generally, and we'll just kind of build on some some different types of topics, and then also really um, want to encourage uh, you know participation from the audience again. So if you have questions, don't be shy. Please put them in the queue. But we'll start with the general discussion, and maybe we'll start with Lori on this one. I really want to start out. What has kind of the last four months really kind of you know looked like for you in, in terms of the challenges and some of the creative ways that you've had to overcome them. And then specifically, you know, we'd love to hear a little bit about um, what role your organization plays with, you know, specific to campus and university rec recruiting. So Lori, maybe we would love to start with you there. Great, thanks. So the past couple of months, I think uh, similar to everybody else has been a whole new territory for us. Um, we had some changes to the organization at Toast. So internally, we've you know moved some people around to take on responsibilities that they hadn't yet they hadn't previously had. Um, we've also really um, our our product team has been working really hard to adapt our roadmap to the the latest circumstances for restaurants. So there's been a lot of investment in the product and engineering space. Um, some of the challenges, obviously, is is not not knowing what the second half of 2020 and the early 2021 is going to look like. So building a team and a strategy um, with a lot of gray area ahead of us has been one of our challenges, as well as keeping the overall toast uh, or toaster, as we refer to it, community connected um, through the virtual workplace. So similar to many, many companies out there, we've gone you know, mostly remote for now um, and everyone is, is working from their home or a, a place that's not our office. So making sure the Toast community stays connected. Um, campus recruiting plays a big part, specifically within the recruiting organization. Um, we 
were in the early stages of building out a really robust program last year. So we've always had a, a strong um, engineering campus program and built out our sales program last year um, with a, a group of engineers that have largely converted into full-time employees. Um, so has historically played a, a big part in our entry-level recruiting. Great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, Fissa, would love to hear a little bit about uh, your experience, both as kind of a, a you know, a graduate, uh, you know, with, with going into your master's here, and then and then also um, in, in, in kind of the past environment at IBM. would love to hear about the challenges and then also the role that, uh, uh, that the organization played with campus for recruiting. Absolutely. So I think campus recruitment, especially for a company like IBM, and I think for a lot of really big organizations is so, so crucial because I, the, the trick with campus recruitment is you get this amazing, amazing untapped talent. You get it early on. And once you've gotten them on board for your internships and your co-op programs, you actually have the flexibility and the ability to sort of mold them in the in the direction that you want the organization to hopefully go in. But at the same time, because they're bringing in so many fresh ideas and so much creativity and so many new ideas, they get to bring that to the table too. So I think it's um, it, it's the, the relationship goes both ways and it goes both ways very effectively. And at least for IBM, when I was there during my time there, our campus recruits were possibly some of the most valuable recruits that we had because we invested so much time and so much um, sort of resources in them and they invested the same in us. So I think converting them and then honing them and grooming them even more was really the trick. Absolutely, yeah. Thank, thank you so much for sharing that. And then finally, Cornelia would love would love to hear from you as well. The same the same uh, the question: What has kind of the last couple months looked like? What are some of those challenges? And then, uh, kind of the the role that your organization plays with campus recruiting. So we are in in a, in a very um, good situation compared to a lot of other companies because we have been very digital to begin with. So for us, it was not such a huge uh, thing. Obviously, it was very, very weird to so no one was in the office and everyone was at home. Uh, but thankfully, it's a very agile organization, so we adapted quite fast. But I think it is also thanks to the fact that we have a lot of young people in our organization who are some of those young recruits that we had um, gotten from campuses before or who are with the company for one or two years. They are very fresh, they are very new, they are very, very innovative. They can really land on their feet in any situation that you, that you really uh, encounter. And for us, obviously we are a very young company. Um, so a startup is usually built up with, uh, with people from, uh, from internships and, and first graduates and so on and so forth. And that was the same for Flixbus as well. Um, and what we kept on having from that is that, um, as you mentioned before, there are so many people coming in with new ideas and this fresh knowledge and the newest technology. So mainly with, with tech hiring, there are so many people who are coming in who are super fresh on new languages and new technologies or the engineering methods. And that's really good for us to challenge the people who are in a position already and in an environment that we have, thankfully, they can challenge each other and they can learn from each other. And that is what drives the business ultimately. Fantastic, great. I, I want to touch in on something, Laurie, you had mentioned, I think, you know, talking about uncertainty, right? Like I think going into the back half of the year, you know, while, you know, maybe those first, you know, six or seven weeks um, in mid-March to, to mid-April were, were, you know, I, I think that was the height of, wow, what, you know, this is really going to shift uh, a lot of different things. I think we're actually starting to really, you know, uh, absorb this and this is, you know, becoming our reality now. So I'd like to, uh, like to ask you, Lori, you know, uh, you, you said, hey, that uncertainty going into the end of, end of 2020, what are some of, maybe give the audience a little, a uh, little bit of insight. What, what are the dialogues or discussions that you guys are having right now internally around what you need to do to kind of shape the you know the recruiting program i don't i i forgot if you mentioned already if you if, if you guys are still moving forward or if you're going to have something com, you know completely virtual but maybe share with us what are some of the concepts and conversations that that you've had and and how that will have that impact in the next few months and, and what you guys are going to do uh uh to um uh to move that forward 
Yeah, so, um, and I know Cornelia can relate to this from a branding perspective. A lot of those conversations have been around how do we still stay relevant on these campuses when we're not quite sure what hiring is going to look like in the spring, where even historically in the fall, we've done a lot of our engineering hiring in September, October for our spring hires, and now that may be pushed out a little bit. So it's really about one, how do we create that virtual presence? We are going to do all of our campus recruiting virtually this year. So how do we make sure that students understand what it's like to be a toaster and bringing that toast experience on the screen? It's, it's harder to understand when you're not at a booth that has your branding and the colors and the people can could touch our the hardware that we that we um, that restaurants use that we build and swag and all of those other things that go into that campus experience and how do we also help students um, while they're navigating the uncertainty of am I going to have a job when I graduate and how am I going to interview so what skills can we help those students build virtually over the next couple of months even if we're not necessarily um, talking about what openings we have but still being a resource for students students in preparing them for virtual interviews and in preparing them for potentially starting their first job and never meeting their coworkers or their manager in person and never seeing the office and how do you still make a decision about whether a company is the right fit or not uh, when you when you don't have a lot of those tactical pieces that you historically would so that's really where our focus has been is what is that program going to look like without knowing exact hiring numbers making sure that we're still there for students that students know that we're there and what we and that we exist and that we are going to be hiring at some point but i'm uh, not exactly sure how many people are or in what areas right now absolutely yeah and there's so many different variables there right and so so many different things to solve for onboarding and you know getting them up to speed and creating culture and all these things that kind of come along with that and and reimagining a lot of that right um, I'd like to stay on this. Uh, like to stay on a subtopic there, and since we've kind of talked into employer branding and moved to you, Cornelia. So, what are some of the things that you're doing to kind of maintain maybe internship programs and kind of you know keeping that awareness out there and keeping that branding out there uh, right now? Um, you know, in a virtual in a virtual capacity. What's um, what are some ideas or challenges, opportunities that you're kind of uh, you know your organization is looking through right now? Yes, as Laurie mentioned, it's uh, it's dealing with a ton of uncertainty. So we personally had to shut down all our business. We're in a travel business. No one was going anywhere. How do you how do you tell someone who is looking for their first job to come to us who doesn't have a business at the moment because we don't have buses on the road and we have, we don't have uh, trains on the tracks? This is a really tough challenge, and it would be a really tough challenge to any other companies in the travel industry or in the hospitality industry as well. Um, and we, what we do is we basically go back to the cornerstone of the business. And I always say that the cornerstone of your business is your people, no one else. Because your people make your results, your people make the, the culture, your people build up everything that you have. Therefore, the brand should be centered around the people. And what we are trying to do is kind of give snippets about how we deal with the crisis situation. Don't try to be super positive about it because it is what it is. And you shouldn't, shouldn't think that someone who is just graduating and maybe young cannot see the full, uh, the full seriousness of the situation. So what we are trying to do and what we are kind of struggling with is really how to how to push through this message that it's a super nice company to work to. You are going to have so many good experiences, but maybe six months from now and not now. So they have to, we have to engage people and we have to promise a lot without being, to, being able to deliver necessarily right now. Um, what we use in terms of, if I, if I have to say concrete examples, videos, 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 and videos tons of videos just as much as you can and i would say not the videos that you pay tons of thousands of dollars or euros for the videos that you record on your phone and just push it out uh we, are, we were really really focusing on putting our founders out there so people see that the leadership is behind uh us and they would do everything for their team and 
thankfully that is actually the truth. Um, and then just showing how, how our team is handling it. And thank God also our team is handling it with a good sense of humor and a really, really positive outlook. So we have been in a really tough position, but I think the most important, not only for us, but for all the companies is show your people, show your culture and show it in a way that it's easy to understand and that is believable. Absolutely, I think very well said. Uh, I'm, uh, another question just kind of popped up there. It's maybe as a quick follow-up, and then I'd love to get some insight from Visa uh, shortly hereafter. Uh, what channels, uh, what marketing channels are you utilizing in terms of? You mentioned all these videos, and you know, not spending you know the you know the thousands of dollars, but the you know on your iPhone and just you know creating something really quick that you can get out there. What is what is the relationship change like with your marketing team, and how has marketing kind of played a role in? in and using utilizing some of the channels digitally to help um, you know create the awareness, the branding, the message, the points you want to get across. Now, um, Cornelia, maybe you could maybe just walk me through that real quick. So, in our company, because of my my uh, position, I am placed in HR, and that's a good that's a really good thing because I'm a marketer placed in HR. And I think that's in some ways ideal, some ways less ideal, but in the current situation, it's really, really good. Sure. Um, so what we started to do uh, as an example is we started to do something called mini series, which um, we are in a lucky situation that we have really, really good people who are in sometimes um, standard leaders in their own um, respective areas. Um, so we just had one of the recruiters video call them record that it's a 20 minute call we're gonna cut it down to 10 minutes because that because that is the length that uh, linkedin uh, allows and then we just push it out there if we want to recut it and do an even shorter snippet then that goes to instagram if we want to do something where we open up a position which recently started to come up then we do a, a one minute testimonial with a phone in two minutes and that can go out and then we connect it to the link uh, of the open position if we feel like if we feel like there is questions coming up from the from the customer service side of the business or or if our recruiters come back and that's why it's good that I'm placed in HR because the recruiters can come back to me and say look this is what I get as a feedback from our our uh, people in processes or our candidates or our prospects this is what they are afraid of this is what they don't understand this is what they want to know then we can react instant, instantaneously and we can just go out and say, OK, this is a good person from a good team that's related to the position. Let him address this challenge and let him address how they dealt with this particular situation. So if I have to sum up, just use the tools that are out there. There are so many LinkedIn, Instagram. If you want to let very, very young people than Snapchat or TikTok, <laughs> why not? Like, There's a lot of people who are afraid to use that. Why not? angle it right and brand it right and it will work um, and get instant contact with the content fast out there from the feedback of your recruiters or from the feedback of your people and then you cannot really go wrong fantastic yeah i love i love the diversity of different uh concepts and channels and i think that that one thing for the audience i think that challenges us to think outside the box right you have to think outside the box right now uh, because uh, campus recruitment is going to be reshaped not only now, but also, you know, in the spring as well, and then maybe even another cycle. Um, so reimagining this, rethinking this, and being uh, bold and thinking bold and outside the box, I think is, is, is you know, as an organization, you'll have to, you'll have to embrace that. Because I know you had a, a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, I wanted to turn to you and want to see if you had any ideas around uh, you know, employer branding, the meaning of it, the reshaping of it, what IBM might have done, uh, any additional thoughts or concepts you'd like to share with Absolutely. the audience? Absolutely. First of all, my sincere apologies for these technical difficulties. For some reason, something is glitching. I can't figure out what it is but I'm going to be relentless as well, and I'm going to hang on and keep going. Um, so as far as uh, creative employer branding, and, and I liked all the points Cornelia brought up, and I completely agree, you know, why not use these sort of unconventional outlets like TikTok or Snapchat? If it's done right, it works, and it's a popular outlet, and it, it speaks to the audience that you're trying to target, so why not? So I thought that was great, um, but something that I've seen 
very frequently um, throughout my LinkedIn and then also on my Twitter and then even little bits on my uh, Instagram, which I thought was great, is the engagement that employers are trying to uh, partake in, trying to you know keep their uh, interns or their co-ops interested, keep them sort of engaged. Um, the interns have actually been posting about that. So they'll post a picture like, I just got this care box from IBM. I just got this invitation, uh, the snack box while I participate in my in my hackathon. And they've been posting about that on their LinkedIn. And I think that that is such an effective yet simple way of branding that the folks that are working um, you know, on your internships, on your co-ops, they are the ones who are sort of reflecting what you're doing. And the fact that they are participating in this activity, that they are posting, that they are saying, you know, IBM really cares, or um, for example, you know, Codility really cares. They sent me this box. I think that in itself is showing you that your branding is effective. And what is a better testimony than from your employer, from your employees, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Fant yeah. Fantastic feedback. Really enjoyed um, uh, kind of touching on that topic there. Um, would love to uh, would love to move on to a different uh, topic. And I think uh, kind of going back to Lori here had talked earlier around. You know what does um, you know what does the entire experience look like, right? So it's one one component of this is you know how is our organization? How do we reimagine and thinking through what the next you know four or five months kind of look like, um, and and making a meaningful impact and and being able to recruit and outreach to uh, you know to these uh, interns and graduates across the board, but then also thinking through what is their what is their overall experience, candidate experience look like? So I'd love to start there and uh, I'll go back to Lori on, on this one. You know, what are you, uh, what, are, what is uh, Poster really thinking through in terms of candidate experience in particular to, uh, you know, this, this virtual, you know, remote uh, capacity when it comes to campus recruitment? What, what you know? What are the challenges that you you think you might have to break through? And you know what has been maybe some of the word on the street been so far around some of those challenges? Yeah, so we're putting um, a lot of of time into planning a thoughtful candidate experience from a virtual perspective for both campus and for experienced hires. And where that's really starting is on the preparation front and making sure that candidates have every piece of material that's going to help them be successful in that interview. So everything from the logistics and like the technical aspects of how to how to have a successful zoom call um, how to make sure that you're you're in an area that the that the interviewer can see you on zoom and testing settings in advance and having the right materials within reach um, so all of those really logistical things and then uh, making sure that candidates have all the latest information about toast we're in the process of updating our career site with some of our, our latest um, product information and how we're adapting to this new virtual environment. But while that's in the works, we want to have uh, candidates still get that information so they can they can actually physically see what a Zoom call looks like when there's 25 people on a team doing that. And some of the creative ways that um, we're keeping Toast connected, which I mentioned earlier, uh, making sure the candidates have that in, in preparation of their interview and even the logistical pieces of here's what's going to happen. You're going to have, you're going to meet with these three, four, five people during your interview, but we know that Zoom fatigue is a real thing and sitting in front of your computer for five hours is in interviews isn't an enjoyable experience. So here's where we're thoughtfully putting in breaks for you. Here's how you're going to be able to take a snack break, take a bio break during the interview. So being really thoughtful about how we're scheduling that and then also preparing our interviewers and hiring managers with the same type of information you know here's how to make uh here's how to help your team shine through uh, from a virtual perspective we're really getting our candidate experience team involved in bringing the office to the candidate we have such an, an awesome office here in Boston. We have a great office in Dublin and Chicago and Omaha. And there's been so much time and thought invested into really making those offices toasty um, that 
we want to make sure that candidates, even if they're not going to be in the office, even for you know, six months or a year or whatever that time frame is going to be, that they can see what the environment would look like when they're there. But even if there's somebody that's going to be remote, how they can feel that sense of, of Toast community um, from there. And then we're, uh, we're building a really good feedback loop into our candidate experience. So making sure that after candidates interview, we know what we're missing. We know what didn't go well and improving that um, for the next candidate. So we're, we have a candidate experience survey that, that we're launching uh, that, will, that will go to candidates in that process. So that'll help us really understand where the, where the pain points are and where we can fix those. That's fantastic. That sounds pretty comprehensive. Um, Cornelia, I'd love to also turn to you. And I, I keep, I love the ideas how, you know, the outreach to campus recruitment with Instagram and maybe the TikToks and, and that approach. I'd love to focus in on content with you, right? So thinking about thinking through what is the content, what do you relay? I'm sure there's culture, I'm sure there's, you know, different things that you guys are innovating around the specific content that that is engaging, right? So um, it's one thing to have a video, but you have to have compelling content to actually explain why a candidate should, you know, uh, should come to work for you, right? So I'd love to hear about that. So um, what we started to realize not long ago, and maybe it's also during the quarantine, is that a lot of people don't understand our business. And I think we are not alone with that. I'm pretty sure there are other companies out there who employ a ton of people and candidates don't know what half of them are doing. Um, <laughs> so that was a big challenge for us. And we thought, everyone thinks we are a bus company. We have a problem with our image for sure. So let's debunk that on the way of kind of engaging people with content as well. So again what we started to do is kind of shed light on those areas a little bit that are not very well known we have a world-class network planning team who are in charge of where the buses go how often they go what they do where they go how is the the bus driver changed and so on and so forth they plan everything and they are at the heart of the operations and no one knows what when i say network planning would you know what i mean no <laughs> you are not in the business and that is one of the areas, for example, where we rely highly on, on, on fresh graduates and campus hiring because there are not a lot of people who learn that and who studies that. So we have to put it out there that we have that in the company. And what does it mean? And maybe you could do that with your education as well. Um, so we did interviews with, with the head with head of our team lead, I don't recall exactly now, of that team and, and have them talk about it. And why that is so good? Because if you choose the right people and they are passionate enough, there's so much emotion in that call. And that's what really engages people. Um, that's, so that's one type of content that we, that we put out. You can also organize, what we also do a lot is organizing events. So we really like to share our knowledge uh, with others. And again, we had after seven years of trying out different methods and our tech uh, people even experienced agile from the beginning. So they are masters in agile. Therefore, we realized we could teach people about that and we could teach people how to, how to, for example, um, learn that in their own business area. It can be HR, it can be marketing, whatever. They all can be agile, but people don't know about that. So let's push it out and let's teach them how to do it. So they have a regular series about that. But if you want to ask me in general, find what is niche about your company, really. Like our niche is our knowledge that we, that we have gathered during these seven years because it was a disruptive business. No one did that before. No one knew how to do it. And we learned so much along the way that we have a ton of content to do about that. That's one way. Second, again, I cannot justify between enough people, 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 people. Um, and if I can have a, an example that is not ours, um, I think it was, I don't recall exactly, but I think it was Pinterest. Uh, they have wonderful um, employee branding videos where they show both the human side of the people and the professional side of the person, which is always engaging. That's fantastic. Always. That's, I, that's I, super cool. Yeah, I love all, absolutely. Yeah, I, I love all of that. And, and, and thanks for you, thank you for sharing some of those insights around the, around the content. Fizz, I'd love to turn to you. What, um, what are some of the things that are key or important to the candidate experience and in particular to, to campus recruitment? Uh, 
I, I started speaking before unmuting myself, but I think that, uh, and this has always come up across the board, every candidate I've spoken to, and not actually just exclusive to campus recruitment, I think recruitment in general is staying in touch with your candidate, keeping them in the loop, keeping them updated with what's going on. It's such a basic thing, you know, and, and I see literally all three of you nodding your heads like, absolutely, that's so important, but it's just so unfortunate that a lot of recruiters uh, miss out on this. It's it's a I think it's basic etiquette, um, and I think it's just absolutely crucial. I mean, put yourself in those shoes. Say you're applying for a job, or you're trying to just hear back from anything at all. You know, a restaurant reservation, and you put in a request, and you just don't hear back. So you you don't know if you're reserved. You also don't know if you should make another plan. So it's it's a very basic thing, and I think um, we need to just continuously focus on that, especially now that everything is so virtual, especially now that a lot of companies, a lot of organizations have struggled with a sort of talent mapping and with recruitment sort of forecasting and planning. Um, you know, plans have changed overnight for, for organizations and for businesses this year, especially. So with that struggle, candidates are already double-minded about the interviews that they're giving about the jobs that they're applying for because they're wondering, okay, is this role really open? Are they truly actively recruiting for this? Or am I just sort of wasting my time and getting my hopes up for no reason all over again? So by no means am I saying it must be a handwritten, customized, you know, letter, uh, like a three-pager. No, it can, it can genuinely be automated as well in scenarios where that applies. But if it's a candidate who is active in your pipeline, who you are pursuing, who is going through the process, I think it's very important to stay in touch and keep them in the loop, even if it's taking longer. Even if there are points that you're unsure about, that's fine. Just let them know that we're just clarifying this direction, this specific area, but we're very interested and, and we're, we still want to pursue you. You have to keep your candidates warm. It's so, so, so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I really, really enjoyed that topic. And I just want to finish off by saying, I think um, what, uh, you know, I've been hosting a lot of these webinars since since the start of the pandemic. And there's so many themes that I think, you know, translate, like you said, Fizza, not only just the campus recruitment specifically, but also to just recruiting in general right now in this type of environment. Mm -hmm. and those themes really are, you know, transparency and empathy, right? And so thinking through Absolutely. being able to, yeah, put ourselves in those shoes in particular for someone that is you know just you know finishing up college or just graduating i think even more so right to being able to make sure that yeah. you know you know to lori's point are they from you know let's make sure that they feel really comfortable and confident in the technology that they're using to, to interview in that we're prepping the hiring manager properly all the way through the you know the whole entire scope and funnel of, of the process and that we're consistently communicating back to them uh, just because you know you can imagine how intimidating that that could be through that process for 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 someone in those shoes, and so I think exactly. you know I, I just kind of think through that, and I, and I, I think that uh, you know we we have to double down on that, and I think that even more so in in the environment for that we're in, and then also for campus recruitment in particular. So um, yeah. yeah, really, yeah, really, really, uh, really great discussion on that topic there. So I, I was thinking about this, and um, we kind of talked. We've talked through how you know the apple, the proverbial apple, apple cart has been tipped over, and you know we've had to restructure and reframe all this stuff. And what's it going to look like? And so I'd love to tip this over and figure out, you know, what um, what advantages do do you guys think that that we're going to have from all of this? Do you think that uh, are there first of all are there advantages to to you know, potentially going virtual or, you know, we just don't know yet, probably a little bit of combination of both, or do you foresee this like now if this is the future, we're just having to accept it quicker, faster, uh, acclimate around it quicker, innovate around it much, you know, much quicker. Um, would love to maybe start, we'll start with, uh, we'll start with uh, Lori again on this one. Um, so what do you feel so far? Do you feel like, oh, this is, you know, this is really going to be successful or, you know, what, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I think one of the big advantages, I'm sure my campus recruiting team would agree, is there's a lot of time in campus recruiting spent in airports um, and traveling, right? Because you're going to virtual events, you're going to on-campus events, um, whether that's career fairs, whether that's uh, in-classroom events. And while we there's such a good branding opportunity there, actually bringing that all virtual gives us the opportunity to look at a different set of schools that potentially wouldn't have been on our target school list um, before, whether that's because the travel logistics weren't going to work out. Um, you know, we're, we've been talking about 
are we going to be able to expand geographically where we're going to hire from? It's you know something we've we've talked about, and what that means is we could think about different areas and different campuses that we're reaching out to. Um, there's also a relationship building and and a commonality between everybody when they're remote, whether the schools are remote, so there's no students there, or whether the um, whether the company's remote. So it really evens the playing field. Um, so there are definitely some advantages. Um, I think there's a certain level of bonding that happens in a certain level of reality when everybody is, you know, in their in their living room, their bedroom, whatever, whatever room they're working from, that brings a really human element to the whole recruiting process, which I think is is going to work in our favor. Um, because you get to see some we one of the things we really live by at toast is bringing your whole self to work and you know you really do bring your whole self to work when you're sitting in your house so um so i think that's going to be one of the really interesting things um and you know help really helping students navigate this this is new so i think companies there's a big advantage on which companies can can really be the best help to students through this time and being empathetic to the fact that a senior in college might not be able to enjoy their senior year on campus and how can a company really help um, help them adapt to that circumstance and one of the biggest pieces of campus recruiting is really uh, that we've that we've experienced here at toast is connecting students before they start at toast so um, we ran a series of in-person events last spring a year ago um, for our sales our sales entry-level sales teams that were campus recruiting events and people would meet at those events and then they were going to be co-workers a couple of, of weeks or months later so bringing that experience virtual where the events wouldn't allow necessarily there, there was space limitations so on virtual you have less space limitations so you could actually gather the whole group of people that were going to be start that could be starting so there's definitely some advantages to being in the virtual space fantastic yeah well said uh cornelia how about yourself well how do you feel do you feel like this is the wave of the future this, there's some advantages here to this what would love to hear your thoughts on it as well I think there's definitely advantages. If nothing else, it it expands your possibilities so much. You can do so many things. As Lori said, you can just in an instant double down and say, okay, I can do now because we are over this corona pandemic, hopefully in, in a year or two. I can do in-person events, but why not do in-person and virtual one as well? Why not double down on those things and really involve everyone, a much bigger population, a much bigger talent pool uh, to your to your normal uh, events? That's one thing. And the second thing that we started to maybe experience a little bit in the company is if you have a, a good sense of humor to the situation, it's sometimes able to take out the awkwardness of the first interview because these are people who didn't have a lot of interviews in the past. If a seasoned professional comes in, they can deal with the situation relatively easily. But when a student comes in, everything is a little bit awkward and you don't know what you can do and cannot do and you don't know how the situation will work. If Skype is not working or Zoom is not working in the first five minutes and the person on the other side of the line just you know, takes it easy and laughs at it, that releases so much tension. And I think it's really good for candidates to feel that mainly if they are young and if they are, you know, not used to that situation. So definitely we see a huge potential and we actually decided, as Lori said, it takes a lot of time, effort and money to, to, to go to career fairs all the time. So before the corona pandemic, we actually decided not to go to career fairs anymore. None at all. And that was basically the strategy all the time to take everything virtual. It's just now everyone else has to do it as well. So we are very happy about that because then it's becoming mainstream and it's easier for us to, to just do it. Absolutely. Uh, Fizzo, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on kind of the, this, this future. What are the, do you think that the, this is an advantage right now or uh, we'd love to hear uh, what you have around it? For sure. Um, I think that this was going to be the future of work Anyways, I think most companies were gearing up to go in this direction regardless. Um, tech companies have been doing it for a little while longer and certain departments in uh, tech companies or in companies in general have been able to deploy this faster and sooner because their um, employees aren't necessarily needed on physical sites or in physical locations all the time. Um, but I think what this did is it just forcefully expedited the process and forced companies to, to go virtual a lot sooner than they had implemented. 
or had planned to implement. Um, but I think what this has also shown those organizations is that, okay, well, we kind of hit the ground running unexpectedly. So can we keep this up? And if we can, then from an employer's perspective, this could be, um, you know, a lot, a lot of cost savings for them that they could then reinvest in their workforce or in, you know, motivational capabilities for their workforce. And from the employee's perspective, it's a lot more like it's increased working flexibility. Um, I used to work on uh, work in one end of the city and live on the other end. So I would drive at least at least an hour one way. And to have that commute completely cut out, there's just a little bit more positivity in your day that gets added on automatically because you're not worried about the, the two and a half hours of traffic that you're going to be stuck in. In addition to that, for and I've spoken to so many of my colleagues who have younger children, for them, uh, in this current situation, yeah, it's a struggle because the kids are at home and the parents are at home and it's just too much going on. But in the future, when kids are able to go back to school, but we can, we still have the flexibility to work from home. I think that is a, a great plus point. And I think that's one of those benefits that isn't compensation related. It's an added perk of certain jobs and it could be, you know, attractive points for, for folks to be drawn into a certain position or towards a certain organization. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I think there's some clear advantages. I think we talked through some of the disadvantages earlier, but yeah, I think, you know, th this is kind of, you know, we kind of got forced into the new, near, the new future, new reality right now, but I think it's also forcing us to rethink and reshape things. And there's a lot of things to like, I, I think about, uh, you know, the virtual and remote uh, concept. You know, again, would we have like more time to kind of ease into it and figure it out? Of course, yeah. But I think, uh, I think overall, there's, there are also some clear advantages to it as well. And, and the three of you, um, uh, thank you so much for kind of sharing your, your ideas around that. I do want to be really quick and, and mindful of time. We're running uh, almost close to uh, about 10 minutes or so left here. And I want to, again, take this time to really encourage the audience. I see, I think we've got one question here, which I'm going to uh, pose to the panel uh, here shortly. But I really want, would love the audience. I'm sure you've got questions for our panelists here. Um, please, uh, now is, now is Right now, it's about the time to, to get your questions across so we can ask them before we uh, we wrap up here. So this first question actually is, is directed uh, first specifically to Lori, and then maybe we can open it up to the group too, is um, we have a question for Lori. What are some examples you have used to bring elements of the Toast office into a Zoom call? Yeah, so uh, what this has started with, with is uh, is thinking about branding our backgrounds, right? So um, this isn't a Zoom call, but normally on my Zoom, I have a restaurant background because Toast is restaurant technology. So um, bringing, whether it's the background of a conference room, whether it's having our interviewers sit in their favorite restaurant, it brings that cultural aspect there. Um, also giving, um, starting with like, a, images around the office. Our office is actually under construction, so it's an exciting time for us um, because we're gonna come back to this beautiful new office at some point, um, but showing what that looks like. Um, and then even then, not the in-office elements, but the Zoom elements that we're, we're connecting with. So at Toast, we do a couple of things that um, company-wide, we have a, a company-wide open mic night that happens every couple of weeks where uh, we have 1,300 people in the company, so from around the company you know people that sing that do poetry any 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 talent that they that they have that they want to show off to the rest of the company they can sign up in advance and then they perform and i've i always try to attend them we have so many talented toasters um so we we show off those elements of our culture we just started doing um online fitness classes so at you know five o'clock on a wednesday i can join my fellow fellow toasters in a, a boot camp class so bringing um that to uh, what we're calling our candidate tour. So when a candidate, ex when a, somebody's interviewing our candidate experience specialist will do this hosted experience with the candidate. And those are the elements of the office. Um, so not just like the pictures and imagery of this, the, our current office, our office under construction, but also those cultural things that are that are really fun um, for toasters. We do pet show and tell at Toast. So uh, with everybody home, one, a lot of people have adopted pets over the past couple of months, but a lot of people had pets to begin with. And it's a natural part of Zoom calls um, that you'll see some or virtual calls that you'll see somebody's dog on their lap. So this was an opportunity for people to actually share. This is what this is what my pet looks like, and this is their name, and this is what they do. So uh, so that that's been a fun thing too that we're that we're going to share with candidates so they can really get that sense of the toast culture. 
That's fantastic. Wow, I love all those ideas. I was actually just kind of taking some mental notes there. Um, you know, I can share also too from the Godility side. We have, uh, we're actually uh, later this afternoon, we're having a bingo night. And so we're uh, we're trying to get, uh, you know, the company together and encourage everyone to kind of play, you know, play some fun games together. Um, I've also heard of, you know, virtual happy hours and coffees and things like that as well. Um, and then we we actually had a customer um, uh, from LifeRamp that they did a virtual um, mapping of their office and created a video around it so candidates could experience and see what you know what the the office will look like when they go back to it at some point right um uh and and so i think having that um that recreation of that environment and that culture at least from a visual perspective also uh kind of gives the candidate oh wow this is kind of where i'd be working and who my my colleagues might be and things like that so i think anything that you could do to kind of help identify that culture and make it transparent and known to the candidate is, is super useful. Um, anything else to add there, either FISA or, or uh, Cornelia, in terms of you know, culture recreation and, and, and how you propose that uh, virtually or within technology? So there's one thing that we did that I think was really, really fun. We had a best home office competition. So you had to take a picture of your home office, but there were crazy categories. So there were like the fanciest home office, the best home office with an animal, any kind of animal, <laughs> the best uh, ad hoc home office where people with moving boxes who move during the corona crisis just built the table and everything. And they took pictures and then the and then we posted all of them to Yammer and then everyone could see it and we could vote which one was the best one. So we had that ongoing competition. Also, we had people freezing during the video calls. So people took screenshots <laughs> of those in crazy positions and they just sent it to each other and we had a board of the best ones. <laughs> so just that's take great. it with a grain store, take it with humor. And I think that that comes through very, very much. I love the freeze shot idea. That's great. That reminds me of one other thing idea. we do like who wore it better at Toast. So like this morning I hopped onto a call and one of my colleagues was on a call and we had the exact same shirt on. And like so we <laughs> so You could have done a who, who wore it better. <laughs> right. That's yeah. great. Susan, I want to give you the opportunity. Anything else you'd like to add here or comment on? For sure. Um, I think just honestly drawing from both what Lori and Cornelia said, I, I mean, when I was last at work, what they started implementing is having like an hourly get together for the entire talent team and just sort of um, playing a game and they would pre uh, like prepare us for the game ahead of time. Let us know, you know, this is what's going to happen. Sending in baby pictures and everybody has to guess who's who or, you know, doing who wore better, who wore it better, those type of competitions. I guess just staying involved with with your teams and just making them not feel alone while they are at home alone so i think it's just you have to think of creative ways to do it and and just yeah like like cornelia said perfectly take it with humor i think everybody could use some humor right now or you know has been using that humor over the last few months <laughs> absolutely great fantastic so there's i see a couple we have about six minutes remaining here we've got a couple questions that have come in from the audience it's great um one is around it looks like culture just kind of reading through it i feel like we just kind of leaned into that and, and i think answered the, most of that question so i'm going to go to question number three here which is do you anticipate going back to face-to-face -to -face career fairs or do virtual events work better and have a higher reach I feel like we talked talked a little bit about that but maybe um maybe we can go ahead and start with uh Cornelia on that one do you foresee your, has there been conversations of like absolutely we're going to be going back as soon as we're able to, um, to you know, the face-to-face, -face, the normal, um, or do you think there's going to be kind of a hybrid maybe of, of, of both? So in our case, I can say a very short and very concise answer, no. So we are not going back to, to physical career phrase because we decided to, to abandon them beforehand. Our campus hiring is going to focus on experience more. So we are going to rather go out to specific universities and give lectures and have uh, events with them and and have like much more close co collaboration which for us gives a better experience and we believe that for the candidates is also giving uh, a better experience 
as for getting um, getting uh, wider audiences, virtual career fairs are super good. Uh, we have a tool called Graduate Land, which is specifically targeting uh, campus hiring and the and the fresh graduates and the people who are looking for internships, and they are really good at organizing those. So for us, it's easier. It's bigger in geography, and it's just for us, it's a better way to do it. Fantastic. How about you, Lori? Do you, are you guys are you're like, hey, like if we're, we're able to do it next spring, we're definitely going back to, uh, you know, to face to face or have those discussions started yet? Um, I think we'll see. Uh, I want to see how the fall goes and what the virtual experience looks like. Um, I'm I'm wondering from the campus side, will career will in person career fairs from the campus relations side, will that still be a thing? So I think we'll 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 know more um, as we really move through the virtual space this fall and potentially next spring, um, where the benefits are. I think whether it's in the career fair space, I think there's there's oftentimes a benefit too of being physically being in the classroom with students or doing a resume review and um, we'll see what that looks like online. So I'm not, I'm not sure yet if, uh, if we'll be returning in person at some point. Sure. How about you, Fizzo? Go ahead and give you the last word here before we wrap up. Um, I have to completely uh, get on board with what Lori's saying. I think there's an obvious benefit of doing either or. Virtual career fairs are obviously very flexible, but there is a certain, um, effectivity of doing it in person and actually meeting meeting um, candidates in person and getting a feel for them and what they're looking for and their eagerness and that also that's something you just can't attain virtually unfortunately so I think it really comes down to what the sentiment is around such large gatherings and what the sentiment is around going back to like our tried and tested um, traditional ways of campus recruitment and it'll just be something that we have to go with as the time comes it's i feel like we can't say anything ahead of time anymore <laughs> absolutely absolutely well this just takes us uh almost uh, right about at time and i don't see any uh any additional questions here so um would love to just uh you know thank you all i've had a, a fantastic time learning from each of you each of you have great experiences and insights i've learned a lot um, and so I again want to just extend a, a thank you to you and then also want to again uh, thank Workable for helping us organize this. I think this has been a really uh, valuable uh, webinar and uh, again I just want to uh, thank you guys for, the, for this topic and I look forward to staying connected. Have thank a great you. have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Thank you guys. All right.